Hi guys. Welcome in uh, Nisi with Free Handley Made. Welcome in Luann with Blackberry Rock Homestead. Welcome Lori from Lori's World. Don't know if Nisi's still in here because she said she was going to be a few minutes late. But uh, yeah, I like your I like your background, pretty. Thank you. This is like actually it. my office. Um, so this is just my quiet space um, over to my left, which is showing off the other way, but um, is my garden area. So that's where I have my shelves and my light, light so I can start my garden. And then this is just my quiet space yeah, um, just for me. So yeah, yeah. That's good. Hello, Black's Tropical Homestead. How are you? Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Michael's Adventures. I need to go back outside uh, since having the hail damage and see um, I could see all the the leaves and stuff broke off because we we had a baseball size hail. So, um, but you don't know how bad it's going to affect the plant till you see if it actually killed it mm -hmm. or if it just knocked off a few leaves. So I need to go back out there, but I'm afraid to. I did go out there yesterday, and I was going to get some lettuce off of the uh, lettuce in my planter. It killed the lettuce all the way. Now, I don't know if it, if maybe if I cut it off, if it'll cut, come back. Um, but I'm going to have to basically uh, go back and replant lettuce and squash and multiple other things because I have lost part of my garden and I need to go back out there and look. But I'm, I don't, I don't feel like crying right now. So I'm not going to go back out there. I don't know. Maybe later. I'll cry later. <laughs> I'll schedule it. Let me just schedule a good cry over the garden. I did go out there forgetting about it for a second. And I went out there and I was going to get some lettuce. I was like, oh, no. I thought there would be at least a little bit that wasn't messed up. but And it was big and beautiful. <sighs> anyway, yeah. Sorry. Well, hopefully it rebounds, though. I mean, yeah, it that's might. how nature is. It, it I have rebound. a lot of that seed, so I'll replant it. It'll probably come okay. back, hopefully. Uh, you know, I have some more space in there. So what I might do is cut off the dead parts of it so that it will come back. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side where there's not something come up in that same planter, I'll just plant some fresh new stuff and then... Um, Probably will have to replant my squash too, which is not good. However, the tomatoes, they did okay because they were on the side of the house. And I guess the hail wasn't coming in that direction. So oh, God. The, the squash and the um, lettuce got it the worst, I think. So, and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good garden year for me. Yeah, last year I had flooding. And uh, it mainly just messed with the pumpkins. Uh, yeah, so that's like two years in a row for me. Last year I dealt with squash bugs really bad. And they kept taking out um, my pumpkins and my zucchini. And it was driving me insane. Um, Haas Tools goes live, I believe, actually, is I think it's Sundays. But anyhow, a while ago, I asked a question, how do you prevent this? Because I don't want to have this issue again. You know, there, is there something I can use to prevent the squash bugs? Besides, um, I use organic pesticides on my plants. Um, and you got to be really careful even with that because of the pollinators. Uh, you have to go out late at night when they're all in bed to spray. Um, but I, you know, even at that, I was having trouble time last year and, he, uh, Mr. Haas said, you know, start them early in your house and then transplant it out. So I put them in, um, little peat moss type, you know, pots, peat pots and, um, got them up really big. And then right before I put them in the ground, I don't want, didn't take them out of their little pots cause they're, you know they'll decompose in the ground, but I broke the bottom part out to hopefully get the root system out. So this is how I feel this year because I struggle with that every year. And I, I want pumpkins like really bad squash I can yeah. get, but pumpkins is like, 
That's yeah, the one I want. Yeah, and it and it kind of messed with the pumpkin area out there as well. So we'll see. But of course, the squash is food. So mm -hmm. I'm more upset about the thing that is actually food for our family than I am about the pumpkins, which is more just for fun. Mm -hmm. In my in my case, also I like my squash. Hello, Hill Country mm -hmm. Prepper, uh, Andale Homestead. Did I say hi to you? Hello, Black's Tropical Homestead. Um, so for, for you guys that don't know, before we get started, um, Friday night, my husband and I and one of my stepdaughters were sitting on the couch. The other one didn't come this weekend because she had a band trip. So we were sitting there. All of a sudden, we started hearing some noise. Um, something was hitting. And all three of us rose up at the same time with this weird look on our face. And he said it was hail. I went, immediately went to the backyard. Uh, my first thought was to rescue the two backyard cats. Uh, baby came in real, real easy. No problem at all. Um, Miley, however, uh, was sitting under the planter. Finally, I had to go out there in my sock feet because I didn't have any, I didn't have time for shoes. Sho shoes was not a thought at the time. I went and grabbed her, put her in the utility room, eventually got her into the house. And then I was, you know, making a video just basically, I mean, it, it was like a, a snowstorm, but just, it just kept pounding and pounding and pounding. And I was just standing there in awe, making a video and praying for it to stop. And it basically ruined my husband and I, both of our cars, both, both of the, front windshields are busted. He has a tire. Don't ask me how it messed with his tire. Uh, both of our vehicles look like Swiss cheese with the bumps. Uh, it, we had, uh, we have roof damage. He went into the attic. There's roof damage. Uh, the garden took a pretty hard beating. Uh, I will go back. I will go out there and, and, and do a, a better assessment because you can tell a few days later, if it just got some a little bit of leaf damage or if it's full blown killed the plant. So uh, we will be checking on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell can be devastating. Definitely. Definitely. Oh yeah. Horrible. Yeah. So, all righty, let's, let's get, uh, let me, before I get started, um, if anyone has the ability to uh, share out this slide, if you would do that, um, to help out the algorithm because uh, sometimes that algorithm, you know, you get a few thumbs down on your channel and they don't want to share you out. So it, it does help me a lot uh, if you will share this out and it will also help Glenda here uh, with Brace and Fire if we get a few more people in. So if you guys have the ability, um, please do that for me. Thank you. And for Glenda. Um, how long have you been um, on YouTube? I just started the channel this year. Actually, uh, Sherry over at Black's Tropical Homestead is the one that encouraged me to start my channel. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole new adventure uh, for me. And um, I am quickly learning how much um, work it is to do a YouTube channel. And it it's um, rewarding as well. And it's fun and it's exciting. But Wow, it's a lot, but it's a good, it's a good a lot. I'm really enjoying it and having fun. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have friends to share stuff with, to be able to share your day with and yeah. like that. share all your little adventures, learn things from each other. Oh, yeah. And uh, in my garden, I use marigolds for to ward off the squash bugs because that's what my dad used to do. So, oh, that's a good tip. Marigolds. For some reason, the squash bugs and other bugs don't like the smell of marigolds. So you might give that a try in your garden. And since you already have your garden up right now, maybe you could just go to like the um, place that already has them started and just put them in between some places there. That has always helped me. So I, when I was watching your videos today, I said, I'm going to remember to tell her that I even wrote it down. So I would remember to tell you that it's worked for me for years. So I just thought I would share that. So thank you. I'm going to do I it. I are seeing you around because you had a different name before I Grace did. and Fire, right? Did you I have did. a personal name? No, I had DeGurley is what I was under. Okay. Um, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. 
just, I was a moderator for my mom's channel and it was just a private YouTube channel. It was never, um, I wasn't even interested in doing a channel, to be honest with you at the time um, when I was modding for my mom and my aunt uh, for the Ann Lynn show. For those who are curious, that's my mom and my aunt. And they started their channel three years ago. So uh, they asked me to be a moderator as, as a uh, you know, family member. And oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi, Hello, Mom. Hi, Lynn Show. How are you guys? Moms, share this video out so you help Gail out, please. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to remember to ask people to share it out. And I don't, I'm normally not the type of person that does that. I don't ask for help. Um, but you sometimes you have to just give up your pride a little bit and just ask for help because I've had people. I'll have eight people in here. They'll share it. All of a sudden I have 20. So I don't like asking for help. That is not my way. If you know me, that's not what I do. Uh, but I need some help right now. And I, I will help you with anything if I can. Definitely. Well, so I'm not afraid to ask asking for help. Hello, Bushwacker Mountain. How are you? Uh, why did you start your YouTube channel? So you were talking about that. You were talking about that. So they talked you into it, but kind of what was your motivation? You know, um, you know, Sherry actually encouraged me um, because I've been homesteading uh, for about 11 years and urban homesteading. I'm not in the country by any means. Yeah, me either. Uh, okay. And, um, and I became a chicken keeper and I've had a few people say, why don't you have a channel? And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, life changes. I'm in a different phase in life. Um, I've raised my family and now I'm just kind of uh, looking at, you know, purpose and life and just kind of going, well, well, why don't you do something different and fun, and exciting for you? You know, and Perfect. this is yeah. new and wonderful, exciting and, and uh something maybe for my grandchildren. I'm getting ready to be a grandmother. So something Thanks, for man. them to look back on and go, that was my Gigi looking at, you know, with her chickens in her garden and things that she shared. And yeah, I think that will be nice. Yeah. Leave that, leave that legacy. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, like left, left a job with an injury. And so I needed something to do and I had tried to work, but the injury was keeping me from being on my feet for long periods of time. And so I started this and I liked it and I made a lot of friends and, you know, just trying to keep everything balanced, family, you know, my relationship with God, uh, my mm -hmm. YouTube channel, just trying to keep everything in balance and trying to support as many people as I can. Absolutely. What Absolutely. state are you in? I'm in Southern Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Um, I, I watched a video where you talk, you were talking about the military. Is your husband in the military? No, he is medically retired. Um, he is, he had a brain injury while serving. Um, but he was in the military. He was in the military. Yeah. He served uh, in the air force until he had had his brain injury and we traveled around and um, so now he is retired um, and I am now his full-time caregiver as a result of that. And um, yeah, so it was a great adventure with the military and um, a bond that uh, with other military spouses and, and now caregivers that, you know, is, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. So yeah, our family is a family of service too. So to this country. So it's uh, yeah, my, uh, uh, my dad was, um, he was the, um, uh, what do they call the Marines where they're not full time? They're, um, the weekend. It's a reserve. Yeah. He was, uh, he was Marine reserves. Mm -hmm. And then my, uh, my grandfather was Navy. And then my father-in-law is, um, was active duty military for years. My husband never has been in the military, but his dad, my dad, and my grandpa uh, were all in the military. So we've had, hello, Mark, the, the so a little, how are you? A little bit. My, my husband was in the Air Force 
Um, my father-in-law was in the army. I'm an army brat. Um, my uh, grand, I have a grandfather that was in the army. I have another grandfather that was in the Navy. My mother-in-law was in the army. My aunt Lynn was in the army. Her husband was in the army and the Marines. So we are uh, very much a military family. I actually wanted to join the Air Force myself. Yeah, um, I actually took the uh, I actually took the ASVAB test myself and and did very well on it at the time. I was really really young, and I was real serious about it. I took the test. I passed it. I did really well. Um, and then I met a boy, uh, and it was all over from there. So mm. that's. <laughs> It, it almost happened, but it didn't happen. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. That's right. How long have you been gardening? So that, so since I started the urban garden, um, it's been 11 years. I tried while my husband was on active duty and I killed everything. <laughs> so it really, for me, uh, it began 11 years ago with cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes was your start. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Hello, Hog Deer 79. How are you? Hog Deer 79 is my brother, my younger brother. How are you? Um, let's see. What do you have growing in your garden this year? It, it sounds like you had a pretty good variety mm. from the videos that I was listening to. I have different kinds of tomatoes, of course. I have my Amish paste, and I have my Dr. Witchies, which is a yellow tomato that I like to eat. Um, I like the yellow tomatoes the best. Um, I have um, some spoon tomatoes because I also like flowers, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second, but I like the spoon tomatoes because I like to add them to my flower arrangements. Um, but I don't typically like to eat those, but they're really pretty in flower arrangements. Um, I'm trying uh, loofah gourds. I've been trying every year. I'm this is my second year on loofah. I didn't do too well last year. Hello, crystals, pets, and plants. How are you? This would be my third year. So third we year. Are, we're going to keep First trying. Year, it, was about one, it was one about that big. That was it. I can't even get them to grow. So we're, we get it, we get a plant and it dies. So we're trying it again. I've got two going. Everybody says, Oh, just do one. And so I've always just done one. Well, no, this year I've got two going. Cause I, I there's got to get, we got to get one going. You know what I mean? It's my yeah. thing. Right? Well, I, I don't know since the hell damage, but before the hell damage, I had about five or six plants and they are on a long trellis. that has like, chicken wire on it just welcome in the bud files welcome in jesus is lord okay just trying to make sure i got everybody absolutely. there absolutely and then um i have kajari melon have you ever had those i've heard of them but no i've never had those so they are like um it's really hard to describe they're a little cantaloupe like fruit and they're probably about like this big like a personal like cantaloupe but they're not they got a different uh, sweetness to them. Um, so I like to grow those up on a trellis panel, um, but they're sweet. Uh, there's another one that's similar called a Tigger Melon. Eh, I mean, it, my neighbor likes it with salt. I kept giving them to him. <laughs> but yeah. I, li I like the Kajari. Um, that's from Baker Creek. Um, the seeds are kind of pricey, but once you get them going, you get a whole bunch of seeds, just keep saving yeah. them. You know, that's my theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then Schwarzenberry, which um, is like a huckleberry, similar, mm -hmm. little different, but makes great uh, jams. So I'm growing those. Um, of course, the zucchini, I'm trying squash this year again. <laughs> Gonna get my squash. <laughs> um, I saved some pumpkin seeds from a local pumpkin farm. So we'll see. I like to actually eat the pumpkin and save it for my dogs too, for when their little tummies get sick and put yeah. it in their food. Yeah. So, so that's you know. supposed to be good for, for good for dogs, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really I've good. Um, my chickens before pumpkin. Mm -hmm. It's really good for chickens. I've, I've actually just cut them open and just given it to my girls and yeah, um, yeah they like it. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing this. So you have some kind of rare stuff. That's cool. I, 
I like to, I like variety and trying new things every year. Yeah. Um, I try new stuff. What am I trying new this year? Trying to think. Uh, well, somebody had sent me gourds, which, you know, they're not ones you can eat, but I have been dying to get some gourds so I can make one of those gourd uh, birdhouses that oh, I've yeah. seen in videos. So I did have, I had some seed from last year, um, provided it didn't get destroyed in the hailstorm. Um, hopefully I will have gourds. I'm trying to think if there's, there's anything else I tried. I have a few mystery seeds. Uh, Lori's World sent me three different kinds of mystery seeds. And then uh, Mountain Grandma Tammy sent me a mystery seed. So I have four things. I don't know what they are. So more than likely I'm growing something I've never grown before in that, you know, in all Absolutely. those mystery seeds. Absolutely. Well, I also have flowers too. So I'm growing dahlias. Um, I have a whole bunch of tubers that are coming up. And I have peonies and um, asters as well coming in out in the garden just because I like those flowers. I have to have something that draws me in. And, of course, I like fresh bouquets in my home. Yeah, I do zinnias and marigolds mostly. They're real easy. Um, mm -hmm. I saw that you were doing mostly in-ground gardening. Do you do any container gardening or raised bed gardening? So I have two separate gardens completely. Um, the in-ground gardening, the one that I featured, is on my neighbor's property where my chickens are at. They allow us to grow in that property. In my actual backyard, I have a raised bed. It's really huge. And I have about 150 garlic cloves right now. Uh, wow. Bulbs going, I should say. Um, mostly varieties from about four or five years ago that I had started. Couldn't tell you what, what they are now because I've forgotten. Um, and then last year I bought elephant garlic. So I'm giving that a try this year. So I'll be harvesting that. And then I have purple sweet potatoes that will be going in. Mm -hmm. um, I have two grape vines that I got from Costco. And the, I mean, I can't even the camera's not letting me like it's long, you know, um, yeah. it's got life. I've got to get them in the ground. I've put them in pots um, for right now because we had some things come up and I've just not been able to get them in the ground. Um, I have a cherry tree that I, that's new. It yes. will take a few years for us to, to get um, that up and going. That would be nice. Have your own cherries. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's a self pollinating cherry too. So I only got one. Um, I've got black raspberries and I have a thornless blackberry back there. And I have an aronia berry of two of them bushes as well. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Lori's World has a what's new in your garden collab. I will check that out, Lori. I wrote it down on my paper and uh, I will check that out. I will be making some gardening videos this week which will be interesting because of the damage. So it might be a sad gardening video. It may not be. Yeah. But that's <laughs> life. You know, that's life. That's what happens to us as gardeners. Yeah. It's yeah. about going forward too. Showing I think it we have to life. show that we can keep going after. So mm -hmm. um, hello, Brampton Gardener. Um, maybe show, okay. Okay. You see my lettuce. Okay. It looks bad. It took baseball size hail, but Hey, guess what? This little bag right here is full of seed. We're gonna we're gonna keep going. That's it's important. not even June yet. You have plenty of time. That's it. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell myself. Instead of getting upset and crying over it, we're just gonna press on with it. And I mean, that's the the beauty of having plenty of seed. Thank you, Lord, for everywhere that I've gotten the seed. Garden State Gardener. Uh, people's giveaways. I bought a few myself, but I'll tell you a lot of the seed I got was from other people. So uh, thank you very much to all those who've given me seeds. Uh, let's see. How How is your fig tree doing? <laughs> I have two of them and I don't have the slightest clue if they're going to come back to life. I think I'm going to have to reach out and ask what's going on with um the company and um because i'm not sure i've got one in a pot and one in the ground uh they are on opposite ends of the um 
properties. So they're not near each other and they're being grown completely different from each other. So I can't say like the pot, you know, is missing water. And I can't say that the in ground, you know, something I don't, I just don't know. I don't know what's happened, uh, you know, and I've done everything. I checked the website to make sure I did everything right. It's just, I think I might have to get a replacement, which is a bummer because figs are one of my favorite things. And it's a food for me. My husband doesn't care for them so much, but yeah, it's one of my favorites. The cherry is more of my husband's, um, but the figs are more of mine. Hello, AKA Bread Company. How are you? Welcome in. What kinds of chickens do you have? Oh, gosh. So I have Easter eggers. I have black astralorps. I have... Um, one white rock. She is, was a, fr a free meal maker from Meyer hatchery. That's the hatchery I ordered the girls from. So the meal maker is Nicholas. where, I'm sorry. I said, hi, sis. I was oh. <laughs> handling me. Hi. So, um, uh, the, my, the meal maker program from Meyer Hatchery is the pay it forward program. So either you donate the eggs or the meat of the bird, um, to somebody in need. Um, none of my birds are meat birds and my, uh, we just wanted, uh, egg layers. So, um, her name is Minnie. So she's a white rock. And, um, then we have green queen Easter eggers. That's a variety from Meyer hatchery. And, uh, yeah, so they lay green eggs. Uh, Brampton Gardner has a new for you. New for 22 um, collab as well. I'm writing both your names down uh, because I'm going to try to do some gardening videos this week. It might be some replanting videos, but yeah. That's okay. We're going to get on it. We That's have, it. We to, well, my my uh, uh, greenhouse blew away last year and I just replanted. My tomatoes did perfectly fine. So we're just going to keep on pressing on. That's it. Um, I'm trying to read my own. Oh, what? which breed of chickens that you have is your favorite? Well, I don't know that I necessarily have a favorite. I know what I wouldn't get again, and that would be the black astralorps. I wouldn't get those again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love my girls, you know, don't get me wrong, but they kind of have been a little bit aggressive towards the other chickens. Yeah. And I, I have Easter eggers basically other than Minnie. Minnie's pretty chill. Yeah. I have quite a, I have a variety of different chickens and uh, my Astralorp is one is a little bit docile. The other one is quite aggressive. So I have half and half there and uh, that is Mocha is her name, Mocha. And so hello, Dragon's Picks. How are you? Um, so yeah, I understand what you're saying. She has been quite aggressive. And when we had the rooster, um, she would have these little pecks on the back of her neck. So he, mm -hmm. I guess he, he was trying to, was trying to put her in her place. Calm down. But I do have a favorite chicken and her name is Coco. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh that's Coco. a cute name. I've never heard of Tabasco peppers. Oh. What kind of onions are you growing? Oh no, I've forgotten. I got it from Dixondale and they're the long day onions. I've got. A, okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got a sweet one and a red one. So I apologize. I don't remember. I made the order and I actually, I tried going back to look at my order. I can't find it. Can't find it. Oh, <laughs> no, but they'll be, they're going to be good onions. And my neighbor is already looking at them going, Ooh, <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. I wish I knew which ones. I just know that they're long day because I ordered it for um, my region. I looked it up by my zip code. And then, um, of course, I'm six, six B is my growing zone and um, which is a long day onion. I can do intermediate or long day, but I got the low deer corner. How are you? Yeah, I haven't had, I, I do well with, you know, just your regular green onion, bunching onion type of thing. But 
the other ones I didn't have good success with this year. And I mean, last year, we'll see, we'll see how they do this year. We'll see how pig headed I am. If I just keep trying, I'm on year two of that. Huh. What does acorn squash taste like? You know, it's kind of bland uh, in taste to me, but I like to add a little bit of brown sugar, uh, cinnamon, or even better pumpkin spice seasoning and some butter to it. And I bake them and it's just like a yummy dessert to me, like a yummy fall time pumpkin spice type yeah. dessert is what it's like to me. Uh, it's just really good. And for me, I'm, um, I'm working on trying to get a little bit healthier and cutting some of the sugar back. So, um, yeah, so I'm working, I've tried it with honey and it's good with honey. And then I've used the Splenda brown sugar too, just cause I do like brown sugar, but I got to cut back a little bit somehow, but it's just like a really good fall taste. It's, it's a yummy treat. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. I'm marking it off as I go along. Absolutely. I've already talked about that one. That way I don't get confused. Oh, uh, you're good. I've actually already talked about that one too. Uh, oh, yeah. How, how are your flowers growing uh, from your weird container, from your uh, chair? From my chair, they're doing really good. So they are coleus plants is what they are. Mm -hmm. And they were actually started last year and they grew um, in pots that I had originally by my front door. And then I brought them indoors for the winter. And actually they were upstairs in my office over to the left underneath of a grow light and my window because I wanted to make sure that they got ample light with the winter. Um, and then I just up potted them into the new pot and took it downstairs and they're doing really good. I, ever since I watched that video, I've been wanting to get my husband to do that for me because I'm not like wonderful with tools. But uh, I have to admit, sorry for anybody else who's in here who might have done the weird container growing. I got to admit, that's one of my favorite. I don't know why. But when I saw you doing that, I was like, oh, that is so cool. I was like. That is neat. It looks, and I actually have a chair. Um, I forget where I got the chairs, but they were wood and I painted them kind of a pinky coral color. And one of them is actually splitting down the middle. So probably not that one, but the other one that just sits on the front porch, I thought I could get hubby to, to do that, put the, you know, measure, put the hole in there and do all that. I was like, oh, that was so, so go by and check out her video on her weird container growing where she is growing flowers in a chair. That is so cool. I like that. So that one looks so cool in the backyard too. Hello, AKA Foraging and Adventures. So with your chair that's splitting, what I would do personally, if it were me, I would take a piece of wood and flip the chair upside down and kind of figure out where you're going to position the hole to cut it out, right? Mm -hmm. and see if you can bypass this. But then I would take, have your husband do it, but I would put like a some glue on the back of a wood, uh, like a scrap piece of wood, and then um, like glue it down underneath and then screw it, right? So that way, if it's split in the middle, I would like, does that make sense? Like a, like take a piece of wood and just like, like make a break. Tear the split and go ahead and do it in that. Still do it, but but yeah. glue, like put a scrap piece of wood with some glue and brace it before you cut it. Brace it, and then and then avoid where you've done it to keep it together, and then just kind of stay away from that as best as you can. Give yourself at least about two inches. I'm a woodworker too, <laughs> so I, but I would go yeah. for it. You're I not find that impressive that a woman can do that stuff. I'm not one of them, but it's very cool. Hello, some old man outdoors. Hello, um, Robert, Homestead Aquarius. How are you? This, um, okay, this way. This table right here, I actually made. Do you see your sticker? Yes. <laughs> it's there. But this I'm table cool. I actually made. 
it's a cherry wood. It's a Hoosier cherry wood, live wood. And I planed it and sanded it. And then I put Danish oil on top of it. And then I just bought legs on Amazon. So that's just, just one of the things. I, it's like one of the silly, easy things to make. But I did that back there. And then I have a second one holding up plants over there. So I have that's two cool. of them. Mm -hmm. and that's, awesome. mm -hmm. But it's fun. I tried to get into woodworking class when I was in high school. My mother would not let me do it. She oh. said that was for boys and I wasn't allowed. And I tried to get into mechanics class, you know, where you learn how to work on cars. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't let me do that either. So it's my mother's fault that I can't work on wood or work on cars because she wouldn't let me. So. I blame it on my mother. I love you, mom. If you're listening, I, I still wish, love you. I wish we were closer. We would have a one-on-one -on -one class. <laughs> <laughs> I would host all you ladies over at my house and like, it's, all right, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> it's do weird it. how many years I've avoided doing certain things that I should have been doing for myself. Okay. Number one, doing my own taxes. I have never done my own taxes in all my years of life. Hello, Snafu Snaps. How are you? Uh, don't ask me how I've avoided that, but I have. Mm -hmm. I have never changed my oil. I've never changed a tire. Um, oh, my. Most of the tools that you're working with, I haven't done. As a matter of fact, when I started making, so I wanted to learn how to make stitch markers. Um, and so I was going to use them to do giveaways and I have given away lots of them. So many, I can't even, I can't even count how many I've mailed out. But, uh, so that was my first time to actually work with tools. So, wow. uh, so when I was on my own, you know, when I wasn't married, I was using a high heel to met, to hammer nails. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just, it was, it was easier. It's what I had. Or a meat cleaver, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm making fun of my own self. Oh. But I did learn how, and it, it took some time. Like my stepdaughter was sitting there with me uh, twice. She sat there with me twice, helping me to close it. And finally now I can make a set of stitch markers in about 10 or 15 minutes. So wow. but that was my first time to ever use tools. I, I swear my first time to ever use tools in my life. So I'm glad. I'm glad I, I did do that. I, I'll give myself props for that one thing I did. You know, you got the little, you have to, sometimes you have to hold it and twist it and you have to close it down. And mm -hmm. I mean, it, I was not used to that. I'd never, I'd never done that. So, but I, I am enjoying it. I like doing it. Oh, and they do a lot quicker now. So, but. oh, that's wonderful. Hey, you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, that's that's right. I'm, that's <laughs> awesome. So, if you were talking to some people on this live and you were going to tell them about your channel, um, what would you tell them? What would you tell them about about your channel? What do you do on your channel? What do you want to do on your channel? Stuff like that. So, I'm just I'm a homesteader. And I, I've been homesteading for 11 years and I'm just a crazy chicken mom and I enjoy gardening and, you know, I just bring maybe a different flair to different, you know, a different perspective um, and also being a caregiver too. And at some point I am going to be sharing a little bit more about this caregiver journey because I think it's important to know what it's like. Um, not maybe not so much in details on my husband, but more about my personal journey because I'm also an advocate for military and veteran caregivers uh, with a nonprofit. Um, so there'll be a little bit of that coming soon. Um, so that's that. So stay tuned for that. Um, I have shared a little bit on some other channels about that journey. So yeah, um, but really, I'm learning as I'm going too with it, which is a lot of fun. Hello, Carpenter Self-Reliance. Um, and Sometimes I'll, I don't know if I should ask a question, but I feel like I should because when you're on here and you're like this, you're trying to get to know the person better. So to help to get to know you better without trying to be overly nosy, um, is your husband bedridden? 
I'm no. asking because I just, okay. Great um, question. No, that's a great <laughs> question. No, uh -uh. no, that's a great you know, question. I think the better you know somebody, the better you can talk to them about certain things. Hello, G Mama Girl. Absolutely. No, no, she has to ask a hard question to get to know somebody better. So I was just no. trying to read from the no. th ways you were, the things you were saying. I was right. trying to read into it with, but then I was like, I'm not going to know no. until I actually ask her the question. You're so. fine. You're fine. Those those are good questions. I, Thank yes, you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. I've noticed you've done some lives. Do you have a regular live schedule? No, I don't. I just drop like whenever. Random. Yeah, I'm at random. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just was, as I was going through your channel, I just noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Have you ever incubated, incubated on your chickens? Have you ever done the incubator or uh, do you have a rooster? No, uh -uh. no. So I wouldn't um, have a way of doing it unless I ordered the chicks in. And actually, I'm only on my first flock. So um, they're just my my first chickens. And it's just my road to crazy chickenhood. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We got we got six chickens and I wanted them to mostly be different because I wanted to be able to tell mine apart because I'm, I'm the chicken mama to, that wants to be able to tell my chickens apart. Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to have. Uh, 12 barred rocks and then I can't tell them apart. So I had one barred rock and two astrolorps and two yes. Rhode Island reds, but their feet were different colors. So one of them was probably kind of a half breed. I'm Absolutely. trying to remember what the other, which one am I missing here? Those are clean. Um, <laughs> Hubby's over there looking at the basket and I'm like, those are clean, clean clothes. Don't mess them up. Hey, hubby, don't mess up the clean clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I had to just say that real quick. Those are clean. All good. All good. <laughs> anyway. No, my husband, um, he he can still do things. It's just that, you know, with a brain injury, it's um, it makes life a little bit challenging because people will look at him and they don't quite realize that he is disabled. And um, it it makes it frustrating. I think when you see somebody, um, you know, people are very quick to judge people. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, a little bit of the grace, you know, giving people grace, you yeah. can't see a brain injury, right? No. Um, he's also legally blind. You can see that he is legally blind because he has his guide stick, right? Um, but you can't see everything. And so I have to do a lot of advocating and a lot of speaking up for him and um, really just kind of overseeing his overall care on a 24 seven and making sure that he's safe and that, um, you know, all his medications are taken care of and all that stuff. And it's a, it's a tough journey, but um, you know, the bedridden question, there are a lot of caregivers that do have veterans who are in bed and they have to care around care for them around the clock. Um, and, you know, that is an extremely difficult position too. But for me, uh, I think, you know, people are, you know, I just, it, you can't see a brain injury. So, but he is, yeah. he is fully disabled and it's, it's been a really rough life. Um, this week was my challenge. I took a step back on YouTube because I put my husband first. And yeah. that's, that's where I'm at with life. You know, and I know when it's time to advocate and uh, step up and uh, I'm, fire is that step up. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Honestly, with all the stuff that has gone on with me this weekend, I really actually had a hard time being here today. But I said, you know, I made a commitment. I want to honor my commitment and I want to, you know, but really, I guess, you know, we went, we went from Friday night, we dealt with it. Saturday, we had a birthday party, a family gathering. So we just kind of put it all to the side and tried to focus on something else. And then we sort of came back in the evening and we went to church this morning. So this is really the first time we've had to deal with everything. So it's, right. you know, it's kind of all, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. I don't know why. Don't ask me why I felt the need to tell you that. But 
No, I think, you know, on my hard days in life, because I have a lot of hard days, you, one of the things I tell other caregivers, and I'm just going to share this piece of advice and take it as you will, but look for the little blessings to get you through these rough times. Find something. And so even if it's just a little plant that made it, that's a celebration. You know, yeah. that that's the blessing to get you through. You know, it, this might be going wrong but there's this blessing going through. And it's a coping technique that I've had to do as a caregiver, because if I sit back and I look at everything, I could be, my grandfather had a saying of, I could be in the molly grub and I could live my life going around complaining and being upset and whining, you know, I could be, you know, I could just be, a, you know, whatever. If, if people really truly knew what my life was like, I could really have, you know, just I could be in a horrible position, but really what it is for me is looking for those simple blessings. Mm -hmm. And, and so for you with the, with your, what's, what's going on, you absolutely have every right to be upset and devastated for sure. Take a moment though, and find those little blessings, even if it's just a little plant, you know, yeah. and, and celebrate that little plant and go, yay, you made it. I mean, yay. I would, I would, I would be out there and look, but I just, I'm like scared to go look, but I know I need to go look. So yeah. I looked that night, but it was really hard to tell because mm -hmm. there was so much hail on the ground and there were so many leaves everywhere. I mean, the hail knocked leaves everywhere. Mm -hmm. Our whole entire front porch that is cement, which is a huge, big slab of cement was covered with leaves. Mm -hmm. We haven't, you know, we had to, it happened on Friday, so we have to wait all the way till tomorrow to even see what the insurance is going to say about the cars, the house. Even like when I was out there assessing everything, there was a hole in the chicken nesting box. Wow. It went through two layers and went inside of the nesting box. There was the layer that's kind of like a roof, the roof of that you would buy. You know, it was like a manufactured small chicken coop is what we started with. And then there was a layer of, I'm guessing it's almost plywood, but it mm -hmm. went through both of those layers and there was a hole right there. And I was asking my husband's like, I mean, I found the hole. And there was a chicken in there at that time, and she appeared to be fine. But with all the chicken problems I've had this year, I'm like, okay, is she okay? I mean, is she really okay? Yeah. Because, I mean, I had one that was picked on, and she died a few days later. So, you know, right. there's that. So I'll be going out there and checking on her as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they're our family, too. Chickens yeah. Are you yes, know, they, they just are. are. They're family. I just hope, you know, none of them was in there at the time. But I don't think, I think there's like the original part is a small little chicken coop. And we started with the six and they were still little. Then we took a dog kennel, right? Mm -hmm. And then ran chicken wire up under the ground and he buried it all the way around to make sure, sure nothing would get inside and covered the whole top of it with a couple of layers of chicken wire. Mm. So, I mean, it's, it's really, really secure and it's even more secure since the whole raccoon fiasco. But anyway, they had that little part under there where they could go and all of them, there's 11, they could all go and just stand under there together and, you know, they weren't getting hurt or anything. So um, hopefully all of them were under there in that little part, you know, Imagine how terrified they were. Right. Right. That, that had to be scary. Yeah. So I'm trying to, my husband usually writes down a couple of questions. Oh, good. How big of a, how big of a garden space do you have? Well, I, like I said, I have two garden spaces. Um, one is, let's see here, maybe 20 by 30. And then the other one, I don't have a measurement on it, on it because what they are is they're two Vita, V-I-T-A gardens. Uh, they're the raised beds. We bought them at Costco and, and 
we connected them together. My husband and I just kind of like stacked it. I, I, last year, actually, I told him, I said, I want to make this as big as possible. So we stacked it together. So it's a real good size. I mean, we've got, like I said, 150 garlic uh, bulbs in there now. So it's a good size. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, mine's pretty much backyard gardening. Half of our yard I use for gardening and the other half we use for grazing the chickens yeah. when we them out. So Absolutely. That's pretty much have how we have our yard uh, sectioned off. Mm, I didn't. What kind of a chicken coop do you have? I was just curious. Hello, asymmetrical preparedness. I had to look closer to read it. <laughs> um, so I built ours. Oh, yeah. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a twenty twenty. Woo! Um, it was a 2020 project. Woo! Our awesome. chickens are not part of the 2020 thing, by the way. Uh, that was a plan before the whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I've heard before. But it just so happened we fell into that. But, which is kind of funny to me. But um, so my neighbors came down and they said, do you want chickens? And I said, yes. And then it was like, okay, what are we going to put these chickens in? And I researched different kinds of coops. And um, where the girls are at or where they were going to be at and where they are ultimately, the winds um, can pick up. And so we had to consider the, how fast the winds come down off of a hill. Um, it can be upwards of 60 miles an hour. And I didn't want something that could lift a little itty bitty cheap coop up and off uh, because there's no protection considering there's a field, right? And um, I looked online at Etsy and found some chicken coop plans for like 10 or $15. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we can totally do this. And then I couldn't get the wood in our car. And so my neighbors um, graciously helped me go get the wood from Lowe's. They met me and <laughs> brought their big old, they have a construction business. So they brought their big old truck and um, helped I'll me see. out. Yeah. And then built it and we built the run too. And it's, uh, and it's all secure. So that it's, I love it. And I, the only regret that I have with building it is that I wish I had gotten the plans for the bigger coop. So anybody that is thinking on getting a coop or building it, think bigger than what you want. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we added on, we call the other part, the run, but uh, hubby put a, uh, like a perch, perch oh. thing that goes this way and this way. And so they all have a perch they sleep on. And on top of the chicken wire at the top, mm -hmm. there's also a tarp, you know, to keep the yeah. um, rain off of them when they're sleeping at night and the snow. Mm -hmm. Not that it snows that much in Texas, but as the mama, the, the chicken mama, I wanted them to stay, you know, for them not to be sleeping in the rain or, you know, waking up covered in snow. So that was my thoughts. And it also is good shade in the summer, which they're under trees anyway. Um, so they have a pretty good shaded area, but that was, that was basically my thought. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, we have two runs. So again, new chicken keeper mistake. I, we built our first run and we quickly realized that it was too small. Um, I thought, you know, they tell you how many, I don't remember how many feet it is per bird. And I'm like, oh, we'll be good. And then the girls got big and it was like, oh, they're not good. So my neighbor's like, well, we've got some extra fencing. Do you want it? You can take it and put it on the back side and let the girls have some, some area to run. So we built, we took their fencing and then somebody donated some um, chicken wire. So we have a chicken wire roof. So that way, because there's no trees. Um, for protection. So to keep the predator, the, the, like the hawks and stuff from dipping down and getting our chickens, we took the chicken wire and we put it at the top. So we have two runs for the girls. We have a big run and a little run. And then there's like a door so that where they can access and we can lock the girls if we need to. It's really great. If I have to do booty checks or whatever on the girls or just do a health check, I can like yeah. Stand in one run and shove a chicken through, shut the door. Yeah. Check what, it makes it great having two runs. Um, but when I first started my channel, somebody made a point, and I'll tell you, I, I do look at um, good tips for chickens. They made, they said, "Why don't you grow hops?" 
um, and let it run up the fence and then go up onto the chicken wire. It'll give them shade. And if they eat it, it's okay. It won't hurt them. And so I'm giving that a whirl. My hops is like this big now and mm. we'll see what happens. I mean, give them some shade. Yeah. <clears throat> I uh -oh. Are you there? 